Hello my friends, back to yet another of the FPD Theater lighting tutorials. Um, now we're going to move on to, gee, what part are we on, part 7 I believe? And we are talking today about writing light cues. So, in the last video we talked about how we use existing ones, use the go to cue to start them up, and the go and stop back buttons to move around following or stuff in a script. But how do we get those cues in the board in the first place? There's several ways to do it. The complexity of this particular type of lighting board is, uh, is just immense. So we're only going to talk about the most common way. And to do that, I'm, we're going to talk about getting the lights we want onto the stage itself. So to write a light cue in this, in this manner, this is called writing a cue using the live method. By live it means whatever we see on stage is what is going to be recorded. So however I can get those lights on stage is fine. So right now I don't have any lights on stage. The lights that you see up there right now are just from the lights in the very back of the house, which I'm going to leave on just so I can see what I'm doing right now and so that you can see the light board when I go down. But there's nothing on on stage, there's no work lights or nothing. So any way that I want to get the lights on stage for a light cue is fine. So if I want to come over here to the submasters, we'll use the ones that we programmed, and maybe put up down center to light the very middle of the stage. Maybe I will cut ourselves a nice red wash as well. All right, so I just moved the switches for that. You can see on stage, we have just what I have said. And let's see, what else might be fun? Let's, let's do a little front light with some colors. And, and for that, we're just going to use the ML controls method of picking it. So I'm using a mixture of methods of getting stuff up in there. In fact, I can even, let's say I want to put, oh, some of these front lights in. Not all of them are hooked in, but I'll just select a variety of them. I'm using the wheel to put them up at 50. All right, overshot it a little bit. 50, all right, that'll work. I'm going to double click to clear those. Now I'm going to go down and find those beautiful lights that shine right at the stage. Here they are. Some of them are already on, so I'm going to choose the ones that aren't. All right. That looks nice. And I'm going to put those on on full. We don't see anything because the colors are all set to zero. And I'm going to go to the ML controls. I'm going to bring up so you see the stage a little bit. And let's see, maybe we make those green. We'll be all Christmassy on stage. All right, see that? All right, so now we've made a light cue. Now, to save a light cue, you simply come back down to the board and we're going to work on this side panel. Most of our saving starts over here. So you can look for the button that says record. You see that in that left bank in the top right corner. So we're going to go to record. And now we have to choose a cue number. So we, in our little line up on the top of the board, you can just see that record on the screen. See that up there? You see that record has appeared? Okay. So we're going to say record. I'm going to back up just a tiny bit. My goal is to get that bottom of the screen and all the buttons in at one time. I think we can do that. Yeah, it'll work. Right. So I'm going to say record. But now I'm going to tell it a cue number. Okay. So my cue number. Uh, let's see. Let's. We know that those we finished up with like in the early 700s. So let's make our cue number 750. Now this thing can take. Um, I think 2,000 Q numbers, something like that, more than you could need, which is why I tend to leave them in the board for probably longer than I should. So there is 750. Now, I can give it another piece of information here too, and I should. And that is how long I want the light cue to come up. Now, this is just a cue I'm going to use. I'm just going to turn on any time just for the audience to watch in. That's walk in. A time for it to come up is probably not important. But if this is in a show and I want it to transition from one thing to another in a smooth way, I probably don't want the lights just going boom, boom, boom and changing every time they press go. 
So we're going to give it a, what's going to feel fairly long. Let's give it a five second time on this. So there is a button right here marked time. I'm going to press time and then five. Whatever number you, if you just put in a single number, the board assumes you want seconds. They assume that you don't want the light cue to take five minutes to do. Now, you can program it for a five minute light cue. Uh, a very, uh, there was a very famous lighting production a very long time ago that had a lighting cue that lasted, I think it was 35 minutes, it was a sunset. Unfortunately, that was before computerized lighting and they had to do the whole thing with just light ops being inc insanely patient and moving buttons very slowly. All right, so that's in. I'm going to press enter and it accepts it and now it's ready. Now, we can now take all of these things, all these sliders down and you will notice I put those down if I, and when I save it all the little red markings that usually lock things on the screen are gone. So all that's left is this light cue on and the reason it's all still on even though I put those things down is because when you save a light cue it automatically brings that light cue on. See on the, where it says live the first thing that's in yellow beside it is what's currently up there on the stage. So what's live is Q750. Okay. Now, if we press the back button right now, it would take us to whatever Q is before it. So let's do that. I'm going to come down here to the back button and press it. And we're going to go up on stage. Oh, that was the Q that we had for taking pictures for, uh, for Beauty and the Beast. That's lovely. All right, but now I'm going to press go, this one right here, and when I press go this time, you're going to see that light cue that we just wrote change. It's going to take five seconds of it. Here we go. Ready? Here goes go. And there it is. Seemed to take an awful long time, didn't it? Five seconds is a long time for lighting cue. And most of my shows, unless I really want it to sneak in with nobody noticing it, I tend to use three seconds most commonly and sometimes less than that. All right, so we had the change. Now, we need to talk about something with writing light cues on this board that's a little different from other boards and what can be a little complicated for people. Um, actually, before I do that, I want to show you one other little thing. If you want to know, when you're using the go button, what comes next, if you look on this little screen up here, it will show you what queue you're currently in. That's the screen that's actually on the board, not the one that's up on the, uh, the screen on the top, um, where it says live Q750. You see under that, though, you see the 750 highlighted and 800 beside it. That's your next queue. So the next queue that's been programmed in is 800. If I press go, it would change to 800 and you notice that 801 moves into the next and our lighting has changed on stage. Kind of a funky uh, combination of light cues there, let me tell you. Now, here is what I started talking about before. Here is what's a little complicated about our board. It's actually a really good thing, but it's fairly different from how other light boards work. Our light board rec records things in changes. Each light cue says we are going to change the following instruments. Old lighting boards, instead of doing that, each, each lighting cue was basically like a snapshot. Imagine if you're making a PowerPoint and you put 10 photographs in PowerPoint and you just set up the transition so that they just fade one to the other. So one of those photographs fades out and the other photograph fades in. They have no relationship to each other. It's just one picture fading out, the next one fading in. Well, with our with old light boards, that's what they were. You'd program, you know, a lighting cue like this, or let's go up uh, up a couple and see what else we have here. Now, those are all very interesting. I don't remember what show that was from, but it's left some really funky lighting there on stage. So whatever. Uh, in old style lighting boards, you'd make a look and then for your next look you would make that and you would just save them. 
and they would all and basically the computer would basically load each of those files as if it was a separate picture. Okay, our light our light board can actually be retro set to that, so it can do it. But our our board does something more complicated. It records changes, so it records how this cue is different from the ones before it. So instead of just saying take down that look and bring up this look, what our light what our light board says is this light cue has said to take down these eight lights that were at 50% and put them at zero and to move these instruments that were at zero and move them up to this. So it records the change. Now, what are the advantages between those two? Well, the advantage to the original way of doing it, the pictures, is that each one is a self contained little snapshot. Nothing you do to any of the other light cues will bother it. The advantage to recording change as opposed to kind of little snapshots of time is that, let's say I look at these lights up here and go, gosh, you know, I recorded these next 10 light cues and they all take place in the same spot. But what I really, really need, I really need a light on that ladder over on stage right. I completely forgot to put that in. So if you were using the old style of doing lighting, you'd have to go through all 10 of those light cues, pull the light cues up, add the light in for the ladder, and then, and then save that light cue again. You'd have to do that for all 10 of those. With a board that saves change, like our board does, all you would have to do is add that light to the first light cue. Now, because none of the other light cues said anything about turning that light off, it will stay on until it hits a command that tells it to turn off. So if you want it on for those next 10 cues, unless one of those 10 cues accidentally shut it off for no apparent reason, you set that light on and it will stay on for all 10 of those cues. If you want it off for that 11th cue, you then would have to jump to the 11th cue and make sure that it was turning off the lights. Now, one of the things I do is whenever I put a blackout into the computer, I automatically tell it to turn off every single channel, whether I was using them or not. It's just something I've gotten in the habit of doing. That way, if I add a light in before it somewhere, when it comes to the blackout, it's going to turn it off even if I add it in later, which is pretty handy. So you see that difference? It's a complicated one to learn, but it's, it's pretty vital for us and uh, how we deal with the board. It makes most things easier when you go about it by saving change instead of just specific looks. Now, the other thing to show you, to show you here is something we talked about before uh, when we were talking about assigning things directly. But if you want to get rid of a light cue that's on stage, you, simp you have to go back to that go to cue zero command that we talked about before. Otherwise, this stuff is going to stay up. Now, you can, of course, turn it off using the Grandmaster. That'll, of course, turn your everything up and down. But remember, when someone else comes and turns on the board and shines this up, the last thing they want is your old cue left in there. So I'm about to be done with the board for a little while. So I'm going to say go to cue. Remember, not, not go and cue, but go to cue. Go to cue, zero. Enter, and it will take five seconds to slowly take everything off. Board's nice and reset. It's ready to go. I can power off my device and be ready. All right, I know that's a little confusing. You'll get better at that once you actually get your hands on the light board and can poke some buttons. Um, but that gives you an idea of how we go about creating a light cue. All right.